How's it going boys? Hattrick Liney, back with another video, finally. And in today's video we're going to be discussing some of the best uh, available UFAs, guys that haven't signed yet, and uh, discussing, you know, where I think they're going to go, where they could fit in on the teams that I believe they're going to go, and uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, without further ado, let's get into this video here. So first up on my list we have Jake Gardner. Now he's one of the bigger UFA defensemen. Uh, I honestly thought he was going to sign on day one, but uh, Jake's probably just looking over all of his options. You know, he can probably command a five to six million dollar contract, so he's probably, you know, looking where he wants to play. He has a lot of options. Uh, he's had a pretty good career as an offensive defenseman who is, you know, most of the time pretty good in his own end. But uh, I know some Toronto fans may disagree with me there. Uh, last year he missed a lot of games, missed 20 games on the season, still had 30 points and a plus 15 on a really good Toronto team. And I have the number one team uh, in my mind that Jake Gardner could go to is the Arizona Coyotes. Now this may be rough because, uh, you know, Arizona doesn't have a whole lot of cap space. They were, you know, for years one of the lowest teams with uh, a lot of salary cap available. But now they're the second most expensive team behind Vegas. So they'd need to find a way to work it, uh, trading someone away, but I do feel like he could definitely fit in there. Uh, maybe even on that second pairing, you know, he would provide a great left uh, shot defense, you know, kind of depth role behind Ekman Larson. Uh, Jake Chichurin, who also plays in Arizona, is a left shot, and he's a little younger, so it would, you know, allow him to grow a little more, uh, play on the top six. You know, he wouldn't have to play top four minutes right now, but I think Jake Gardner would be a great fit in Arizona. I also believe he could definitely play in New Jersey. You know, they got Subban, the right shot. Uh, New Jersey's always been kind of weak in the defensive department, so they could definitely use him. And he could definitely always return to Toronto. I know Toronto has the cap space kind of available. They might be able to squeeze him in. He'd probably have to take a team-friendly deal. I believe they have, like, uh, just under $4 million, and when they get Nathan Horton's salary on the uh, LTIR, they'll have a little bit more to spend. Uh, I think that would definitely push Mitch Marner out of the team. So I'm not sure what they're going to do there, but he could definitely return to Toronto and definitely someone I see signing very soon. Next up on my list, I have Ryan Dezingle, who played for Ottawa and Columbus last year. He's had a pretty good career so far. Obviously, last year, a breakout season for him. 56 points in 78 games with 26 goals and 30 assists. I could see him being a 20-goal, 30-assist, 50-point guy for the rest of his career. You know, Ryan Dezingle really showed us this year that he is a great player in the NHL. And I have him going to the Minnesota Wild as my first destination, and then Arizona followed up by possibly a return to Columbus. So what I have him going for uh, Minnesota for is because, you know, there's a very uncertain situation with Minnesota with Jason Zucker. No one really knows if he's going to be returning or not. Are they going to trade him? And Zach Parise is definitely not getting any younger. So the left wing side is very open on the Wild. I think he could slide in on the left wing, and even if they wanted to, they could put him on center. Uh... You know, Minnesota already has a lot of centermen with Eric Stahl, Koivu, Victor Rask, and Joel Eriksson, who's also very young. But, uh, you know, they could definitely play him on the left wing. Uh, I also see him possibly going to Arizona. Once again, just like uh, Jake Gardner, they'd have to be able to find a spot for him with the cap space. But I think he'd definitely fit in with the Coyotes. It definitely makes sense. Uh, you know, he'd fit in with kind of the, the player base they've built there. And I also think that obviously he could return to the Blue Jackets if they needed him. The Blue Jackets still have a lot of cap space after losing out on Panarin and Bobrovsky. They got Goose, Ny Goose Nyquist, who is a right winger, and it definitely makes sense to add a left winger in Ryan Dezingle. Coming in at number three on the list, I have Michael Furland, who uh, has now had back-to-back 40-point -back seasons. He's a power forward. He can make hits. Uh, obviously, he can put up some points as he has the last couple years with Calgary and Carolina. And the three teams I have him going to are Vancouver, Tampa, and Calgary once again. Now, I believe Vancouver is the front runners for him because uh, they got some space. They could definitely afford to sign him. And I think, you know, right wing is something that they definitely need over in Vancouver. Aside from Brock Besser, is Jake Vertanen a second line guy right now? I'm not sure. Nikolai Goldobin's also there on the right wing. But uh, Furland would definitely fill that spot until either one of those guys would be ready to take a second line role or they were to acquire someone else for the right wing. Uh, I could see him being a second or third line guy there. It would definitely, you know, it'd be a nice line. I think you could compliment the guy like Bo Horvat. I don't know about Elijah Pedersen because Pedersen will probably be playing on the first line. But uh, I think Vancouver makes sense, you know. 
as long as, you know, they could be able to fit him in somewhere, I think he'd be a great fit there. Uh, Tampa Bay as well, you know, Tampa, you know, they need, if they need more players, I think it would make sense. You know, he's that kind of guy, you know, who's like a fourth or third liner on a championship team, and Tampa is definitely a championship team. Um, shock, they got swept, obviously, but uh, they could definitely go all the way next year, and uh, Michael Furlan would definitely make sense for them, and he could return to Calgary. I had it, it, you know, this one could be either Carolina or Calgary, you know, it's always in the works, a possible return for any player, so uh, Furlan could definitely return to one of his older teams. I put Calgary down because I think that one makes more sense than Carolina, but you never know. Coming in at number four on my list, I have Ben Hutton. And, you know, he's had some ups and downs in his career. Obviously, Vancouver was not very good last year. Uh, minus 23, missed a lot of time. But, you know, he's a pretty solid uh, defensive defenseman with a little bit of two-way in him. And the teams I have him going to are Buffalo, the Sharks, and possibly a Vancouver return. Now, aside from the unfortunate uh, situation, it would be that if Ben Hutton signed there, there would be a Carter and a Ben Hutton on Buffalo. I think he definitely fits into the vibe of the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, Buffalo definitely could use some more left shot defensemen. They have Dolan, you know, he's very good defenseman, obviously, you know, had a great rookie year, first overall pick, you know, he has it all. But uh, aside from that, their next two defensemen are Jake McCabe and Marco Scandella. Uh, Scandella isn't getting any younger, and I don't know if Jake McCabe is a true top four defenseman, so I think Ben Hutton would complement that uh, second defense pair with Brandon Montour or the newly acquired Colin Miller. I think either of those guys would make sense to play alongside Ben Hutton, and I think this just makes sense. Uh, the other teams I could see him going to as well, like I said, are San Jose and Vancouver. Uh, San Jose has lost a lot of defensemen to some trades after signing Eric Carlson, and they just need some more players on their team. I think Ben Hutton would probably be a top six guy there. And he could obviously return to Vancouver as well, but with the signing of Tyler Myers, I know he's a right shot defenseman, it just makes it a little more unlikely that they had to shell out $6 million for Tyler Myers. That Ben Hutton would return, but you never know, it could happen. But uh, Buffalo is my number one for Ben Hutton. And the last player we're going to be talking about today is definitely the most legendary player on this list, and that is Jumbo Joe Thornton. Now, I mean, just looking at those career stats, it's absolutely insane. Joe Thornton, one of the best players of all time, for sure. Still getting it done at 40 years old. Uh, only missed nine games and put up 51 points and a plus eight on the Sharks this year. And some of the teams I think he could sign with are all in the Pacific Division. It is the Ducks, the Coyotes, and he could re-sign with the Sharks. Now, I think the Ducks make the most sense for me because, you know, aside from Getzlaff and Henrik, their center depth is a little lowly. Uh, Sam Steele is pretty good. I don't know if Derek Grant is a true NHLer, but uh, one of the other reasons I really like the Ducks as a destination for him is that uh, the Ducks have so many young wingers, and to learn off a guy like Joe Thornton would be absolutely great for them. Guys like Raquel, Kasha, I mean, they have Getzlaff, but uh, some of their even younger guys like Richie, Sprong, Terry, Max Jones. You know, some of these guys, it would definitely pay dividends for them to learn off a guy like Joe Thornton, because Ryan Getzlaff, you know, as good as he is, wouldn't be able to play with everyone on the team. Uh, even Sam Steele, you know, would be able to learn from a legendary centerman like Joe. And I think it would just be a great fit. Uh, obviously, like I also said, they could go to the Coyotes. With, once again, with the Coyotes, it's just a cap issue. He would have to take a lower deal. But I don't think Joe Thornton's concerned with uh, money at this point in his career. And he could return to the Sharks. It's the only, the second team he's been on in his NHL career, only with Boston and San Jose. So once again, he'd have to take a lower deal. But I don't think he cares about money. I think he could return to the Sharks if they wanted. And he wanted to go there. But I have the Ducks making the most sense. And that is going to be the video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, definitely trying to pump out some more off-season content. I uh, haven't been too up-to-date. Uh, obviously, I had the one video on July 1st that just concerned offer sheets. And within an hour of uploading it, we saw an offer sheet. So it was good to be right, but uh, sucks because, you know, my posed question didn't have a lot of time to get answered, which is fair. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, and goodbye.